Some of the smartest scientists alive wondered if their invention might ignite the Earth's atmosphere and end all life in an instant. Others secretly pleaded with the government, don't drop it on cities. Their warnings were ignored and hidden from history. Even as guards patrolled Los Alamos, spies inside stole the bomb's secrets for the Soviets. And when the mushroom cloud rose, the man leading it all whispered words that would haunt the world forever. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This is the story of the Manhattan Project and the buried secrets that reshaped our world forever. In the middle of nowhere, a city was built that did not exist on any map. Scientists from around the world arrived here, sworn to secrecy. They carried not only briefcases, but also the weight of history on their shoulders. The mission ahead was bigger than anything they had ever faced. Robert Oppenheimer gathered the team and explained the impossible task ahead. Their goal was to unlock the power of the atom and turn it into a weapon. Some felt pride, others felt fear, but no one spoke it aloud. The future of the war now rested on their calculations. The first experiments began with trial and error. Chemicals hissed, sparks jumped, and failures came as often as small winds. Each attempt pushed them closer to the unknown. The work was dangerous, but stopping was never an option. Some calculations suggested the bomb could ignite the atmosphere itself. Most dismissed the chance as impossibly small, but the fear never left the room. No one outside these walls was told. It was a secret too horrifying to share. Secrecy was strict and no word could escape the fences. Soldiers reminded the scientists that spies could be anywhere. Even friends and colleagues were told not to be trusted. The walls around Los Alamos were built not only of wire, but of silence. Far from home, the scientists tried to hold on to normal life. Letters carried love, fear and hope across the miles. Some dreamed of peace while building a tool for war. Their hands worked on the bomb, but their hearts longed for family. Failure was constant and crushing. Experiments broke down, and days ended with smoke instead of success. Frustration grew, but the clock of war kept ticking. They knew they had to push forward, no matter how many times they fell. Then, at last, the breakthrough came. The reaction worked, proving the power inside the atom could be unlocked. Cheers broke out, but they were quiet, almost uneasy. They had won a battle of science, but what would victory mean for the world? Away from the labs, whispers filled the night. Some scientists worried less about the science and more about what the bomb would do to cities. Fear of silence kept their voices low, but doubt grew stronger each day. In the shadows, questions began to take shape. In their letters and journals, the scientists let their fears escape. Some wrote of guilt, others of the weight of responsibility. Their words revealed doubts they dared not speak in meetings. The ink carried the secrets their voices could not. Robert Oppenheimer carried the greatest burden of all. He pushed the project forward, but inside he wondered what his work would unleash. Each late night left him staring into silence, searching for answers he could not find. The leader of the project was also its most troubled soul. The military wanted speed, not questions. Generals pressed the scientists to deliver, reminding them that lives depended on victory. In the eyes of the army, the bomb was the key to ending the war. Doubts were brushed aside in the name of duty. Not everyone agreed on what the bomb should be used for. Some argued for a demonstration, others for a strike on enemy cities. Every word carried heat, 
and friendship strained under the pressure. The science was no longer the only problem. The ethics now weighed just as heavy. In secret, a few took action. They signed reports and letters, urging leaders to think before using the bomb. Their hands shook, knowing the risk of being discovered. Still, they felt silence was no longer an option. For some, the guilt became too heavy to hide. Alone in the desert, they asked themselves if they were building a weapon or a curse. The night gave no answers, only quiet space for doubt to grow. Their fear was not of failure, but of success. At last, their doubts became words on paper. The Frank report urged leaders to pause, to think about the future before using the bomb. It was a bold act of resistance inside a project built on silence. The document was submitted, and the fate of the world now held one more secret. At last, the pieces of the bomb came together. Every bolt, wire and charge had to be perfect. The smallest mistake could mean disaster, yet hesitation was impossible. The weapon that lived in theory was becoming real. Security grew tighter with each passing day. Guards watched every gate, every hallway, every person. Scientists felt the weight of eyes on them wherever they went. Trust was gone. Secrecy ruled the camp. Even inside the most secret laboratory in history, information found its way out. Klaus Fuchs, a German-born physicist, carefully copied critical details of plutonium implosion for the Soviets. Theodore Hall, only 19, risked everything by secretly sending diagrams of the bomb's design. David Greenglass, a machinist, passed assembly notes to Soviet contacts, and for years the world didn't know these betrayals had happened. The numbers had to be exact. The team rechecked formulas, chasing answers late into the night. A single wrong calculation could mean failure, or worse, an uncontrolled disaster. Anxiety clung to every stroke of chalk. Some tried to escape the noise inside their own heads. Looking out at the desert, they wondered what the first explosion would mean. Would it end a war or begin something even worse? The silence of the land gave no answers, only more questions. Then came the warnings. Sirens screamed across the desert, signaling that history was about to change. Soldiers took their positions as scientists rushed to final preparations. The test site became the stage for the world's most dangerous experiment. The countdown began, each second louder than the last. Hearts raced in sync with the ticking clock. No one knew for certain what would happen when the switch was thrown. All they knew was that the world would never be the same. On July 16, 1945, the desert became brighter than the sun. The Trinity test proved the bomb worked, and the world crossed into a new age. Some cheered, others stood in stunned silence. The greatest achievement of science had become its most terrifying creation. On August 6th and 9th, 1945, the bomb was unleashed on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Cities once full of life were turned to ashes in seconds. The destruction was beyond what even the scientists had imagined. The world had seen the power of the atom and its terrible cost. The men and women who built the bomb reacted with shock and sorrow. Some felt pride in ending the war, others felt guilt that never left them. Their letters and diaries spoke of sleepless nights and heavy hearts. The silence in the labs was louder than any explosion. The decision to use the bomb was made far from the desert labs. Leaders debated targets and weighed military advantage over morality. In those rooms, the bomb was not a theory. It was a tool to end the war. The choice was made, and history changed forever. When the news reached the public, reactions split. Some called it victory and cheered the end of the war. Others wondered what kind of future had been unleashed. 
the shadow of the mushroom cloud now stretched across the world. Robert Oppenheimer's mind carried the weight of what had been done. He recalled words from the ancient Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The quote would forever be tied to his name. In that moment, triumph turned into lasting regret. The bomb did not end fear. It began a new one. Whispers of a coming Cold War spread quickly among the scientists. They realized their work had not stopped with Hiroshima. The race to build more powerful weapons had only just begun. The debates did not end with the war. A new generation of scientists questioned what role they should play in shaping the future. Responsibility weighed heavier than discovery. The moral debate over the bomb continued, echoing across decades. The weapon was made, but should it have been? That question haunted Oppenheimer and his team for the rest of their lives. It still lingers today, as the world lives under the shadow of their creation. The Manhattan Project ended the war, but began a new age of fear 